Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome. Well, today's video is about the week that was a few traveling yarn adventures and a little happy mail. So let's get started. First off the ranks is the happy mail. I got this lovely card from Christine, a loyal and long standing subscriber. A beautiful thank you card with flowers. I'm really into flowers at the moment. Christine, it was lovely to receive, but you really didn't have to. I was more than happy to do what I did. But what was in this card will go towards my fundraising for Pink October. It is greatly appreciated, and I thank you for thinking to send the lovely thank you card. Okay, the week that was. Well, I finally got around to finishing a long-standing whip, not a very big whip, and what urged me on is another project and I wanted the leftover yarn from this whip to go in the other project because I didn't want to go out and buy new yarn. So what is my long standing whip I have finished? Well, I have finished one of the otters from the otter family. This is a paid for pattern that was given to me by a lovely loyal subscriber and friend um, from the USA. And um, at the time, I really loved it till I started making it. There are 15 pieces to one adult otter and you have to put them together. I made all the 15 pieces and then I put it away. I just couldn't bring myself to put it together. But when I needed this brown yarn, I decided I'm going to finish the otter and hopefully I'll have enough yarn left over for this new project. Want to see my little finished otter? I think he's quite cute. There he is. Ta-da! He's designed to hold the baby. I don't know if I'll make the baby. Things suggested I could just make like a clamshell and he could hold a clamshell because he's laying down otter. The yarn, the brown yarn, was supplied to me by a lovely subscriber, Raylene from Melbourne. And this was the colour. A bit of it I needed to finish another project. So yes, my otter is finished. I think he's really cute. I may have not quite finished that ear off properly when I joined it, but there you go. Because what you do is you make all the pieces and then as you crochet them together, you're crocheting the, the arms on, crocheting around, sewing the tail on, crocheting the tail, tail inside this and crocheting up another arm, crocheting the ears to, to attach everything. But I think he turned out really cute. I did use artificial safety eyes. I'm not great with eyes, but I don't think I did too bad a job of his nose. So there you have it. I finished the otter. And to be quite frank, to take a break to be, to, before putting it all together was a good idea because when I did put it together, I just put it together in one night. So yes, do I make him a shell or a rock? where he lays and holds it, or do I just leave him? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, the pattern, as I said, is paid for on Ravelry. It's in my library. Spin a yarn crochet amigurumi, amigurumi hotter family crochet pattern. And that's who it's by. I'll put a link in the description below. So, I made the otter. I'm really quite proud of it. And yes... I will be entering him in Amigurumi Wars for this month. Now the other little pattern I bought this week, I haven't printed it off and I forgot to bring my iPad in. It is The Leggy Spider by Joe's Web. I purchased the pattern and I've made a leggy spider. He's pretty small because I used Karen Simply Soft Camo, but here he is. Now, I'm not so sure I got his legs right, but there is my first little leggy spider. Ta -da! I only gave him two eyes because I didn't have any smaller ones. And yes, he turned out a little smaller with the four weight. I hopefully might try him with a, a chunky or a, a blanket weight yarn. But he is really cute and I do like him. And I think because of his camo beigey colours, he turned out really well. I'll put him on a key ring and uh, maybe sell him at my next market. But there he is. The Leggy Spider by Joe's Web. You can buy the pattern on Etsy and I'll put a link to her pattern in the description below. 
highly recommend it really easy to follow yes the legs are tricky but you know a couple worked out a couple at the back are a bit like he's kicking his leg out I've done something not quite right there but anyway he's a spider he's not supposed to be absolutely perfect but he's cute to me the leggy spider by Joe's web yes I'll enter that in Amagurumi Wars so my traveling yarn adventures well we left the Orkneys and we headed to, we were heading towards Perth for the Scottish wool festival and I wanted to stop off in Innisfail and Loch Ness I have been there before and I really like it we managed to stop for like brunch in Innisfail, um, Inverness and um, next to the little cafe where we eat was this shop that sold some locally made stuff and I bought my first Christmas decoration I usually like to buy one on our travels to remember the um, trip by a lucky sixpence I traditionally believed to bring wealth good fortune and good luck to the keeper it's not a toy made in Scotland and I bought well there's quite a, a lot of different ones but thing pick the hairy cow and there's the lucky sixpence and that'll be my Christmas decoration from this trip from Inverness we went up to Loch Ness and mainly because up around that way was a uh, tea room that also had hairy cows you could go and pat. I think I've talked about them before. And Thing got to pack hairy cows, which was on his bucket list, and he was in heaven. He just loved it. Um, they have big, long, dry, coarse tongues. But he did feed them, and we got some stickers, and that made his trip. And we headed to Perth. So we stayed overnight in Perth because the Scottish Wool Festival was running for the next two days. But we were only going to stay for a couple of hours because we needed to get back to Edinburgh. I hadn't booked a ticket. I queued. I was early in the queue. Thank you. Because it was quite a long queue by the end of it. A lot of people bought tickets. I think I said in previous video I was overwhelmed. It wasn't huge, but... It was overwhelming for someone like me who's never been to one before. And there was so much lovely yarn. I wish I had the two days so I could sort of do a survey the first day and go back the next day and buy what I thought. But I didn't. But I did buy yarn. I think I've shown some of it before and some of it may have been in travels. So I bought these two from the same vendor. And um, this one, because there was only one skein of it, she was discounting and selling Zakami, I think it's called, um, 437 yards, fingering weight, um, from the sheep, blue face, Lester. I mean, it doesn't have a colour on it, but there you go. I just like the colour. There was a lot of, a basket of odd sods, so I bought that one. And I bought this one because these colours were really catching my eye at the festival. And um, same, same thing, um... 100% Corriedale, which is the sheep, fingering weight, 437 yards. She told me the Corriedale yarn is probably her best-selling yarn. This, after all the yarn in Scotland, is soft, but not really, really soft. Um, I would have to wear an undergarment. Some people would just be able to wear it. Um, it's a hand-dyed in uh, Edinburgh. So this was from the Scottish Wool Festival. And then I bought this one, which you would think was almost identical, from a different one, um, wool, work, wool Chemist. I think I've shown this before. It was a sock set I wanted hand-dyed in Scotland. Basic sock, 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, doesn't have the sheep on it like the other one, but this was really good value. So they were the things I bought, plus I bought a couple of other things because I may throw together a mishmash of travel stuff that I bought and do a giveaway at the end of all my travel videos. We went back to Edinburgh. This time I booked the hotel. It was a little further out. It was an older hotel, but it was really lovely. The room was really lovely. And yes, the bus stopped into Edinburgh. The city was right outside, 25-minute bus ride in cheap hours we caught the bus in because thing had to drop the hire car off that afternoon and we went early afternoon and we did a bit of shopping or we planned to but we didn't really buy much but what thing did was near the bus stop 
that was shop selling handmade or hand knitted garments and he noticed there was a small stand of yarn there and he said why don't you have a look at it and I did actually buy two because there was only the two colors and it was only a small tray and it was so this is Petey Brown it is Brinlin Yarn Company from Seafaring Sheep um, pure Hebridian wool yarn from the sheep bred on the crofts in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland 100% wool I don't know if I've shown this before but I bought one of those they were um, let's say a little exy but I did want it it is softer than most of the yarn I bought in Scotland and I quite like this and I think this might wash up okay. I probably would have to wear an undergarment. I'm quite sensitive, but other people would, wouldn't. The other colour I bought, because I thought they went together, is Speckled Hen. Same thing, same um, sheep, same yarn company. Now, it does it tell you how many? 150 metres per wall. So... It may end up being a pair of socks or I may just gift it to someone who likes pure wool and unusual wools. But there you go. That was my last purchase in Edinburgh. We caught the train. At, we had dinner that night. And the next day we caught the train back to London. We had about five days around London catching up with the sun again. He was working back teaching and so it was mainly at night. We did do our day trip to Oxford on the train, which was a pleasant train ride. And Oxford is interesting, but a day is not long enough. You need two to three days. It's all about the academia and the university and museums. It is lovely. It was very wet and cold. When we set off from London, it was lovely and warm and sunshiny. Good job we took raincoats, because by the time we got to Oxford, it was raining and cold and miserable. We did do um, the Oxford markets and ate in there in an old cafe. There was a yarn shop in there. I did have a look, um, but they didn't have anything really different. There was wools and acrylics. And yeah, I, I don't know if the weather put me off, but I didn't really buy any yarn. And we did say we would, if we went back to the UK, um, Thing wanted to go to some of the museums and we may go to Oxford for a couple of days next time. But it was like a recce trip. We enjoyed the day out. We also went to the Camden markets during the day. We spent most of the evenings with our son at different restaurants or having dinner at his place. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I also bought a kit at the Perth Mar um, Scottish Wool Festival. I think I've shown it before, the hairy cow kit. I've been doing some cleaning up of my craft room. I've got three kits. I've got this one, I've got a koala kit, and I've got a bilby kit that my friend Ulia gave me. So maybe next year I'll line up the kits and finish those amigurumi kits. <sighs> I should check my notes. I won't be a moment. Yes, yesterday, <laughs> well, last weekend we went, I met up with Ulia, supposedly at our crochet for cancer meeting, but we got the wrong date. It was this weekend. However, we did stay and have lunch and had a good catch up and we went again yesterday to crochet for cancer which happened to be the anniversary of when it was first um, established and some of the facts all the blankets and beanies we've given away and who we've given them to and yeah it was a lot of fun and yes I stayed for lunch with Ulia again it's great to catch up with her and that's where we go it's really nice food um, and reasonably priced so yeah and that's pretty much what I've done this week. I have been really busy with work. I am planning a gala dinner. Thank God it's only cocktail wear. It's not black tie. Um, it's sort of coming together really quickly. It's a fundraiser in the honour of a lady who used to be a teacher and principal. She actually taught both my boys. And yes, we have... Um, the president's been really helpful, but I've been putting in some long hours and not a lot of crafting time, you know, basically looking at old whips and thinking, I'm going to finish that. I'd like to um, finish quite a few of my whips before the new year. And I think talking to Uli yesterday, I have 11 to go and uh, I'll just concentrate on reducing some of them. 
My next video will be our last stop, Amsterdam. Ta-da! I bought quite a bit of yarn in Amsterdam, so I hope you come along for the ride and have a look at what I bought. And yes, I'll be talking about the MCAL in a positive way. I haven't started it, and the second week clues out already. That's because work's been really busy. I do have a question for you, and I'm not being, like, it's not guess and let me know. It's actually helped me. I want to know how much meterage or yardage on average for a baby blanket in four ply or fingering weight yarn would you recommend? For those people who make baby blankets in fingering weight or four ply yarn, the average baby blanket pattern, what would be a good amount of yardage or meterage? Mainly because I want to go through my stash. Um, when I did the um, spike stitch with the lamb meringue from Lion Brand, it actually took more yardage than I thought and that's why I brought it home because I knew I had more wool or more yarn. And I thought, well, if I do another one, I want to make sure I've got enough of the colours to make the blanket. And the one I want to do it in is all this four ply, very soft baby yarn. So if you can let me know in the comments below, you expert baby blanket makers, I'd really like to know before I go ahead and start and then go, I'm going to run out. I don't want to play yarn chicken. So the week ahead is going to be even busier planning the gala dinner. I expect next week will be extremely busy. It's going to be held on the 11th of November, which is our Remembrance Day. And the next day, the 12th, will be my first craft market. Boy, I'll be finishing at about 11, 12 o'clock at night and back at the craft market 5.30. Today I went through some of my tubs and decided which ones I'll be taking because I know I'm going to run out of time if I'm not organised for the craft market. So guys, I hope you've had a great week and you've enjoyed crafting. We've got beautiful weather today. I'm doing the video because Thing decided he was going to take Saxon to the beach. He's feeling a bit, I don't know, couchy and he felt he needed to get outside with the dog. And yeah, the house is quiet, so why not make a video? Well, until next time, stay safe, stay well. Don't forget about Pink October. For those of you who have asked, it's 75 grams of pink yarn and all you have to do is post your pictures on the um, Facebook group page if you're a member of that or on Instagram with the hashtag PinkOctoberAU. And if you don't do social media, feel free to email me and send me your pictures. Give me permission to show them if you like. And that will make you all eligible to enter into the draw for Pink October. So... Have a great week and remember to turn October pink. Bye for now.